Natalie Sidesurf here of Sidesurf Cake Studio, and I'm going to show you how I made a realistic dragon cake. What I really love about this cake is we're going to use one of my favorite cake decorating tools, which is scissors. Not only do the scissors create this really, really interesting texture, but the sound they make is very satisfying. So you're going to have to listen for that. <laughs> Let's get started. We're going to start out with some modeling chocolate. We're going to make the entire head out of chocolate. And right now I'm just kind of blocking out where I want everything and all the facial features. So I know where the eyes are gonna be and I know how thin I want the nose. And this is something you wanna do before you get into the details. Because if you start working on the details and you realize, oh, my eye's a little too high or my eye's a little too low, you gotta start over and it's a big pain in the butt. So go ahead and get your proportions pretty close before you start the details. To make the nostrils, I just took a pointed tool and I poke the chocolate and then I wiggle the tool a little bit. So when you wiggle the tool, it flares out the edge and it creates the perfect nostril. You might think, oh, I'm going to add like a little piece of chocolate to create that nostril, but this is so much easier and it really looks more fragile. It just looks more realistic. Now I'm planning exactly where I want the eye to be. And I'm going to roll up a tiny piece of modeling chocolate into a ball. And then I place it right on the eye socket. And then I'm gonna blend that little piece in. And since it's nice and soft, it's gonna be really easy to sculpt. Then I take a chiseled tool and I create that circle shape. I think it would be just as easy if you rolled up a pea-sized bit of chocolate and you placed it on. But uh, I just really like doing it this way. I'm defining that bottom eyelid. The eyes on this dragon are super small, so I wanna make that eyelid nice and thin and little. The top eyelid's gonna be a little grumpy, so it's a little lower in the front towards the nose, and then it kinda arcs up. The same goes for the eyebrow bone. It's gonna be a little bit lower and thicker towards the nose, and then it kind of arches up and tapers off. Because this is a dragon, so we want him to be, you know, a little bit scary. <laughs> now, if you roll up a ball of tin foil and you press it into the chocolate, it creates this really awesome random texture. And I do this pretty often. It's perfect for something like a snake or in this case, a dragon. Um, because the marks it's making are super random. You don't want these like perfect, you know, repetitive marks. I like that they're in all different directions. I took a blade and I made little marks around his lips. And I think it just kind of adds to the texture of him. Now this is the fun part. You grab some scissors, the tiny ones, and you just start snipping away at the chocolate. It creates the most amazing pointed scales. Then I go in and I manipulate the scales a little, make them a little less perfect. I want them to go in different directions slightly because it looks more realistic. You want to snip around his eye, and then we're going to add more modeling chocolate just behind his eye so that we can continue making scales. And then you're gonna grab your scissors and we're gonna start snipping away. The first layer just behind the eye, I made smaller snips and then as I go back, they get larger. So we've got a small and then a medium, a large, kind of like an extra large. You can see I push into the chocolate and then snip push in, and then I snip. It looks so cool. I love this technique. I mean, it's super, it's super effective, but it's also really fun to do. I'm gonna continue adding texture. I wanted to define the jaw a little more. So I added more chocolate, and then I added bitty bitty little snips and tiny scales right along that jawline. I added more chocolate to the top of his head and added two spikes back there. So 
So when you go to do the other side of the face, it's really nice that you already did one side because now all you're doing is replicating it. So you just want to kind of look back and forth and make sure they're pretty close to each other. They don't have to be perfect, but uh, you already figured out that one side and how you want it to look. So now you're just copying. Here I have a 10 inch cake board and I have a 10 inch round piece of vanilla cake that I cut in half. Then I layered it and now all I'm doing is rounding out the edges. Once I have the edges rounded out, I'm going to taper the ends just slightly. This is where the neck is going to go and the tail. So it's kind of like a giant fat banana. Next, you crumb coat the cake with some buttercream. So I just took an offset spatula and I'm spreading the buttercream all over the cake. And then you want to smooth it out. I have this scraper that bends that's really nice. It's not super necessary, but it, it does make it a little easier. And I placed the head on the cake board and I had to go slightly off the edge of the cake board just because I thought that would look cool. It could just be on a bigger cake board if you wanted. And this is some cake dough. So it's basically the stuff that cake pops are made of. It is cake crumbs mixed with icing. And you could make the neck out of cake, but I like having the variety. I like that some areas are cake dough, some areas are cake, uh, and then some areas are chocolate. Next, we're gonna roll out some modeling chocolate. And you just wanna make sure it's larger than the 10 inch cake board. And then you wanna cut away to expose the face and the head, and then shape the body. Go ahead and trim away the skirt and then tuck the chocolate underneath the cake. There aren't a lot of like crazy details with this part. You just really wanna cover the whole cake, blend the neck into the head. And I kind of made the tail a little pointy, but other than that, it's pretty simple. We're adding texture to the neck the same way we did to the face. So you just add some foil that's crumbled up and you just start tapping. Now you take your little scissors and you're gonna add some scales. So these are all gonna be pretty small scales. Now we're gonna make the horns. So I'm taking white fondant in this case because fondant is gonna dry nice and hard. So I rolled it up and I'm adding lines to it just to create some texture. Some of the lines I'm adding are nice and thick and some are gonna be light and feathered. So there's a little variety. Then you wanna shape the fondant kind of in a slight S and you set it aside to dry. There are three horns on each side of the dragon's head. So they're gonna have a large one, a medium, and a small one. So I'm gonna make six horns total. Then you wanna place the horns into the chocolate. So start with the large one, and then the medium one just below it, and then finally the small one. And you do the same for the other side. I added a little piece of chocolate so that the head blends into the neck really well. I want it to look like one solid piece. So let's listen real quick.
How satisfying is that snipping noise? <laughs> it is so fun. I love adding texture this way. For the tail, we're doing the same thing that we did for the neck. We're gonna add the texture with the foil, and then we're gonna go in and add the scales. There's um, larger scales going down the center of the tail, so it's gonna be nice and thick, and then all around it is smaller scales. So basically the wing is just a giant curved triangle, and then I add the texture the same way, and then I pick it up, place it right on the body, and now I'm gonna manipulate it and try to shape it how I want the wing to look. I added a little horn on the end of the wing, and then I wanted the other end to be kind of folded and have kind of a thin feel to it. To add the shoulder blade, I just took a chunk of modeling chocolate and then I shaped it. What's nice about this is the feet and the arms are completely hidden. So you don't even have to worry about sculpting those. It's a major time saver. Now we're gonna add some scales. The scales towards his back are gonna be a little larger and then they're smaller as they go down the tail and they're smaller as they get, go towards the head. I'm gonna add the scales to the wing as well because we want it all to look cohesive. Like that wing really belongs on this dragon. Now we get to paint, one of my favorite things. <laughs> Especially after sculpting all those details, it's really, really a fun cake to paint. So I made a bit of an amber colored eye and I wanna keep it light towards the center and then the edge of the eye is a bit of a darker shade. Then he's got some black eyeliner and then he has kind of a cat eye. So it's just a thin tapered vertical strip. Now I'm adding some red around his eye and it's gonna go down through his nose. The entire dragon's gonna be mostly grays and browns, but I wanted to have these kinds of pops of red because I feel like it's really gonna make those eyes kind of, kind of glow. <laughs> and you wanna take the brush and make sure that you're getting color in all of those marks that you made. You want the color to seep right into those crevices and really define all those shapes. It's funny because I always say that, you know, when you create all this texture and then you go in and you paint, it almost paints itself because really you're just letting all the color go into all these marks and it's easier than I think it looks. <laughs> I took a clean dry brush and I wiped away some of the food color. And what's nice about that is it only picks up on the raised area. So it's just a really easy way of adding highlights. I even went in with like a light green and added a few highlights with that. You can even take with a very dry brush um, with a little bit of white food color, like to go over lightly some of the raised areas, uh, highlighting around the nostril and around the eye and even around the top lip. The horns, I kept white. I do have them blending from a dark gray to a white, but I wanted them to, you know, really pop against the scales. Now I went in with a kind of a burnt orange. It's a bit of a red, orangey color, and I covered the entire dragon in this color. I knew I wanted to use it, so I know if the entire thing is covered, then I can go in with the browns and the grays and the greens, and it's just gonna be cohesive throughout the whole dragon. Now that you completed one side of the face, you're seriously taking everything that you did with that face and then you do it to the other side of the face. So again, using the same colors and the same techniques that you did with the right side of its face.
So we got our red areas, got our green areas, and some highlights on the scales. You can see around the back, I kept it light, and then I went in with gray and then green at the bottom, kind of like these stripes that go through his back. And I love the tail. I love the orange color and then the outside having that green and gray. I think it looks really, really cool. For the wing, I kept some orange areas that I wanted to feel more translucent and light. And then I went in with those three kind of fingers and I made those, you know, grays and browns. So with a little bit of piping gel, if you take a blob of it and you paint it over the eyes once they're a bit dry, then it's gonna make them look shiny. And it is so cool against the scales. The scales are very like matte and then these eyes are super glossy and it looks like they twinkle. <laughs> And there you have it. It is a super colorful, a super textured, and kind of adorable dragon cake.